Now on to uh, the snare drum. So as we had it with the kick drum, we're going to use a sine wave as the basic sound. Also randomized to zero, set the character. And um, yeah, we're going to use a, a similar uh, amp envelope this time, only that it is a bit shorter. It is significantly shorter than the um, than the kick drum uh, amp envelope. <clears throat> and not forget, don't forget the amp envelope. Okay, something like that. And now again, use the second LFO or any other LFO for the uh, pitch envelope because the electronic snare drum also uses um, a pitch envelope or makes use of a pitch envelope. Not necessarily, but it helps to get the, 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 the drum character um, to improve the drum character. Okay, just, let's just bring this up again this mode. It's a bit too slow. Okay, let's see how where we get with this. And very important this time, the noise part. I'm going to use the stereo noise as well. Uh, just as I did with a kick drum sound, make sure the phase is somewhere else. We don't want phasing sounds. I mean, there's hardly any part in any drum loop where kick and snare drum are played together. I mean, there's a few examples, but um, just for the case that it might happen, might be good should it just um, change the phase a little bit to make it slightly different from the other noise part to just not have these two noises stand in each other's ways and create some weird phasing effects, flanging even. All right. Um, so the third envelope in this case will look a little different. That's going to be the amp envelope for our noise. So what I did here is uh, I have an in increment of the yeah, of the, of the transient, so the initial, the very initial bit of the sound is also have a, has a, a small snippet of noise on top. And we used to have it like this for the kick drum, right? And the character for the snare drum can be largely improved by using a little, by uh, supporting the transient with a little bit of noise in the very start of the sample. Now let me just play that sound, and again, envelope mode. And I have the feeling that the pitch envelope is too slow still, it's too kick drum like. And possibly this is also too long. Almost sounds like a knock now. And this noise part. That doesn't sound too bad. You can hear the clicking now.
Right, that's a very nice click in the beginning. Okay. Well, so we've got the amp envelope, one, we've got the pitch envelope in two phases again, and then we've got the uh, amp envelope for the stereo noise, and the stereo noise is going to go through high pass filter, just makes this thing a bit more authentic after all. And I had good experience in paralyzing the um, this uh, amp envelope for the noise with uh, the filter cutoff frequency. It supports that hittiness of the, the pew, you know, it just increases the Oh, that sounds very good. Okay, and again, it could be a little bit of distortion. And for the few guys that wonder now, why is it not exactly the same that you explained in the Ableton course? Um, I can just say, you know, as I start from scratch every time and I don't know what happens next. Well, that was a joke. Um, but let's say I show different ways to do similar things and uh, it's always good to have more than just one approach to your final drum sounds in this case um, and that it doesn't have to be the same all the way you know there's just a few basics that are always that probably w would never really changed change which is the sine wave as one of the basics uh, to use for kick and snare drum and the this pitch envelope thing, the amp envelope, that's all the same. Um, but for now, we're also going to see what distortion can actually add to the sound. It's also a question of character. Again, parallel to this and the high pass filter, see what happens if we optimize the drive. Very snappy sound. Why not? And um, there's also another way to increase the knockiness of the sound, of the snare drum sound, um, which uh, is done via an EQ. And I'd use a similar, um, not exactly the same. We could try with the same thing, but I think we need different timings to automize the mid-band, the EQ mid-band to support the, yeah, I call it knockiness of the sound, you know. So again, envelope mode. So you have that little spike in the beginning, if not the same as this. So we'll see, might even work with this envelope, but we have another envelope here, just in case we need different timings. And, um, yeah, just automate that gain thing and see how it sounds. Let's see if I switch it off. There's a good knock and there's good the character is quite there. What if I add this? That's even. somehow really makes it very, very delicate, like the transit is even a bit more knocky than it used to be before without that thing. See, it's a lot softer and a lot more synthy. It gets more physical now. You could also um, experiment with the chain of the effects here. In this case, it doesn't really change too much. I'll probably keep it this way around. Nice. Okay. So 
so kick and snare. And then we've got the first hi-hat. Hi-hat is a very simple...